Oh, wow. Oh, mycelium? Mm -hmm. Wow. Cool. Might I put it on my channel? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, tell us about it. I've, I'm, I'm fascinated by fungi, mycelium, and mycology and all of that. So, it started out as I was just interested in, in 3D printing molds and then uh, kind of fell into Echovative, okay. which uh, makes the mycelium that I use. Started out very small with some of these smaller ones. Um, but then I started blossoming. Mind if I pick one up? Yeah, feel, feel free. Yeah, feel free. And of course, they're all for sale today. So okay. Feel free to ask for prices. Prices haven't gone up yet. So I got <laughs> interested in it. And I also teach, I was teaching at a high school, a design charter school at the time. So I did it with my students and I got really interested in it. And I ended up getting it designed in Philadelphia. Um, okay. Uh, I guess it was like five years ago as a uh, alternate honorable mention. And, and last year I was in one of the top 12, no, I'm sorry, top six um, finalists for best in emerging design. So right now I'm looking to I have an NDA with a certain company. So I'm working to sell these on mass scale to architectural okay. firms and other places. But yeah, I'm just very, very interested in mycelium and what it can produce and how all of my lights are 100% um, recyclable. You can compost them, put them in your garden. A couple yeah. weeks later, they get eaten up, and the lights, of course, can get whether IKEA or whatever ones you're using can be reused over and over and over again. So circular um, sustainability. Yeah. So so pretty much what I'm seeing is it's uh, wood fibers that are being held together by the mycelium that grows between yes, them. Yes, it's actually hemp. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's actually hemp. Um, Ecobeta uses. Um, byproducts uh, with our upstate New York almost near Troy. Oh wow, it's like foam. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a nice velvety touch. Mm -hmm. yeah. nice so it, is this still alive or do you it's kill dead. it? Okay. So it grows, what happens is, and it shows you over here in this handout, um, right. so you print the molds, which I make in a software called Morphe. And then I get the Grow, grow Yourself kit with, um, you can see this is from last year. Yeah. Substrate is hemp. Then I'll mix it and let it grow in the bag. And then I will um, let it grow for, let's say, three, four days, whatever it is. Take it out, recompost it, rehydrate it, add more mm -hmm. flour and other nutrients, other secret nutrients. And then I'll put it in the mold for overnight. Then I'll flip it, take the mold out, which is this is one of the molds. Okay. It's a two-part mold. For the larger ones, I have a four-part mold. Okay. And then what happens, I will go and cook it, which okay. is the answer to your question. So yeah, I'll, yeah. So I'll cook it between two and, two and 300 degrees. Uh, in the oven. So that locks it into that locks state it that in, it's in. It kills the mycelium. Now, I don't have any here, but there's, I've had a couple ones where I went on vacation and the mycelium kept growing, but also yep. the mushrooms, uh -huh. which I believe Echovative uses some sort of reishi uh, mixture that's super secret. But yeah, I did have an overgrowth on that. So it does <laughs> happen, but usually like, I cut it close. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's nice velvety. Or nice yeah, yeah, color. yeah. But 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 at least like whenever you buy it, it's not going to get out of hand. It's, it's, it's not going to get out yeah, of hand. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not going to get out, out of hand at all. And and I assume it's it's not releasing anything for like allergies or no. going to mess with no, that or anything. it's actually fireproof to a certain number of degrees. Okay. Um, I've made gears out of it and laser cut them. Um, they're super strong. The tensile, tensile? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, tensile strength. Yeah, tensile strength is really strong. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of books out there, a lot of research being done. The one that's over here, that's in front of this uh, 3D print, the inside is actually used something called Grolag. Okay. So uh, this guy, Pertha, I think he's German. Um, he mixed up a Grolag and you could 3D print it and then put in the mycelium and the mycelium grows around it. Mm -hmm. So that's what creates that real soft shield. I haven't used it that much recently, um, but I have been using it for some of the smaller pieces. So have you gotten much interest for it yet? Yeah, I have an NDA. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With a company uh, in Philadelphia, that's all I can say. But, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, like the consumer, like like do people genuinely like it? Because it's it's neat. Yeah, I've been I've been selling them internationally on Etsy for almost a year. Oh, okay, cool. So, so yeah, so you can buy them. I um, mean, go to my website, get mm -hmm. my card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can throw a link on your channel, and um, yeah, they've been selling really well, and I just can't keep up doing like, yeah. a studio basement, you know, because I'm an artist and designer mm -hmm. and a teacher. I just can't keep up the demand. So, so, so he, about the business side of it, yes. the um, the demand scales fine apparently, mm -hmm. but the production, is this something that could probably easily be pushed into like a small little yeah. workshop or factory or whatever? Absolutely. That's what the okay. plan is. Yeah, okay, cool. The plan is not, not 
in too much of the business side of yeah. it. Yeah. Because I just don't have, because I'm a full-time teacher with mm -hmm. the school district Philadelphia and I run a maker space. Let someone so. else handle that. Yeah, yeah. But the so process I, will kind of evolve easily into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, um, I use Ikea lights right now, but we're looking into doing getting another company to do similar ones because Ikea keeps changing their designs and I have mm -hmm. to change my molds yeah. which is the pain in the rear end so I don't want to sit there and shave them and cut them and or laser cut them mm -hmm. so um, the bigger the larger ones the new Ikea lights that I use fit right in there um, and, but you can use any light any light you want I just happen to pick up some inexpensive nice looking white ones at Ikea oh uh, last question yeah absolutely how, how would they hand up, uh, handle age like, 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 like what's the oldest one that you've had this one right here. This one is, let's see, six years old. Okay. Yeah. So the color might get a little bit more off white. Yeah. That's, that's still. But it, but 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 it doesn't really change all that much. No. Not okay. At all. Cool. This other one is also probably maybe four or five years old. Okay. So they really haven't. The color really hasn't changed that much. They age well. They yeah, age yeah. Very well. They're very strong. Uh, See that? That's the factor because the fact that it could probably last ten or fifteen or twenty years, mm -hmm. especially if you keep it dry. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you have something that's that's almost nothing, and you've turned yes. it into something that lasts. It, that fills the place of plastic or fills yeah, the place exactly. of glass. Exactly. And I'm very much in my own life. Um, I try to recycle as much as possible. Yep. Um, all my filaments, which talk, these are actually made in Morphe as well. Okay. These are um, all made with um, algix, which is. Uh, algae mixed with polylactic acid so they are technically really? recyclable and i use these i make these in morphe and i make these in um, grasshopper do you know uh so this actually has like recycled like organic material in it and algae which is a pest yeah yeah you know. wow. so i use those and then i you know i also do um in my own personal teacher life on um, hydroponics and i grow things yeah. in the space because we have a, a window very similar to the one that's behind us over here at the seaport, we have mm -hmm. a huge window in my maker space, so we've been doing a lot of hydroponics with Aero Garden, and we're going to be probably transferring them. And you know, kids are going to get to make, make their own pots and grow their own um, their seeds from the Aero Garden. Well, that is really cool. I, I'm glad you're working on that because so I'm really big into, or here really, I'm kind of moving more into like getting rid of, rid of packaging material and mm -hmm. getting rid of using these uh, plastics and stuff like that in things that don't really need it. Ecovative already does that for yep. Dell, and there's a large wine company in California, and they've got a big, I mean, they just got a new um, mm. hedge fund, not hedge fund, someone donated a lot of yeah. money, um, investors, so they actually have, um, so that we can replace all the styrofoam and all yeah. the crap that's out there, but it'll last for a thousand years. Because I know, if I crumble one of these up, like I said, it'll be gone in my yeah, pants yeah. and the bugs mm -hmm. and everything, and it'll compost. and zero waste yeah it, it, it's not an alien to nature yes it's a part of nature already yeah they've done so much stuff you've seen uh you've seen on um trying to think what the channel well i'm also on the biofabrication um facebook and usually facebook is kind of useless sometimes no offense yeah. to facebook, but, oh, oh, it's, but the biofabrication uh, and um channel that i'm on like it's huge response to all the stuff that i've been mm -hmm. doing um, and also people are doing amazing things sculptural architectural yeah. packaging um and even you know houses so it, it, it's my firm belief that like sure everybody uh, it, it used to be i remember in the early 2000s i'd have to like push for solar power and wind power but now those are already taken like yeah. they're here yeah. But now we need to work on the next thing, and the next thing is getting rid of packaging material, make, making things mm -hmm. even more reusable and renewable. Yeah. And the prices, you know, I, there's other people out there that are selling these for like $400, $500, and my prices are a lot lower, so yeah. I want to bring it down. And yeah. Cool. I mean, granted, they do... You want to make it better. Yeah. Yeah. They do ship them, of course, but the mycelium to me, mm -hmm. but... Um, Besides that, like there's, you know, I use water, I use flour, and a couple other mystery yep. ingredients. And yeah. That's it. Like I have a bunch of a little um, secret ma ma magic dust yeah, that you put on there. Dust. Yeah. Little pixie dust, if you <laughs> will. And you know, and it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, even though I stress out over everything. Yeah. It's hard to start a company, and and then it's hard to have a company that you started and take it the next level. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And that's why I I came to even though my wife was in the business world. Like I I know I'm better with this stuff the actual I'm, making of it yeah yeah, yeah. This, this, this other company that i'm dealing with has 
channels to do those mm -hmm. things that I just don't have the head for. Yeah. And I, I enjoy this stuff. I enjoy it a lot. Like I, I like algae. I like other other you know slime people mm -hmm. they're doing. But like mycelium, when I found that, I was oh my god, this is like amazing. And uh, shout out to Corinne Takara. She's um, person that got me into it. Uh, we were talking at. Construct 3D, which is run by Ultimaker 3D Printers. Yeah. This was like five or six years ago, and she had started doing it. I said, oh my God, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And she gave me a little little light, a little tea light, and then it just bloomed from there. Uh, and big hearts out to nice. Corinne, because she's um, the really the person that helped me out with tweaking the recipe and getting the beautiful matte finish that you get with the lights there. Nice.